Welcome to a video on learning ink. In this video I'm going to talk about includes and stitches. Returning the idea that ink creates this flow across the story that we move through the flow as a user. We have here the include keyword at the very beginning of this source code. We see include dinner and include getting ready. If we click the expand button here we see these are two additional files dinner and getting ready each of which defines their own knots within those files but I'll get to that in a second so we see here at the top here the use of the include keyword all capitalized which includes the two other files dinner and getting ready and as I mentioned they have their own knots but we'll get to that in just a second moving through this we see the same text on the left that we see on the right chapter one moving through till finally into chapter two we see the first choice but before we get to that let's do a quick review of how knots work because this will be important when we get to stitches so we see here at the end of chapter one a divert to the knot chapter two we see the definition of the knot chapter two starting on line 14 and progressing through until it gets to the choice starting on 19 and includes the choice 21 on line 21 which we see over here on the right hand side either pick out something good or don't bother which are the two choices presented on line 19 like I said in line 21 the divert though on lines 20 and 22 may look a little odd these are in fact stitches stitches are subsections of knots in the same way we think of the metaphor of flow and the metaphor of a threaded line or threaded or threads throughout the story we can go to a knot which is a section and we can go to a subsection of a knot which is a stitch again coming back to this knot metaphor and flow metaphor that ink uses so we see here we can define a stitch as reference within a knot so we see the very first choice pick out something good is the knot it's in, a dot notation, and then the stitch it's in. So let's go look at the file getting ready. Getting ready is its own knot, as I mentioned. We see three equal signs, the name of the knot without any spaces, and optional or the recommended three equal signs defining that knot. We see then two stitches within this knot. Instead of using three equal signs, it uses one. So we see here, this is a stitch, pick out something good. Notice the underscores and no spaces in the name of the stitches, as well as the name of knots. So we see the stitch, pick out something good. Then we see if we come to this stitch, it reroutes us to the knot, chapter three. The same with just grab something. This stitch defined here within the greater knot getting ready, uses the divert back to the knot, chapter three. So let's see that in action. Over here on the right hand side, let's pick out something good. So we see pick out something good. And then we see the text, I took some time and picked out something good, which we see over here on the left hand side. Then we diverted to the knot chapter three. Chapter three was back into the main file. Let's scroll down then into chapter three. So we see chapter three down here, eating dinner. Then we see it diverts to dinner. Dinner is defined within a different file. Dinner is within the dinner file. So coming back over here to the dinner file, we see, but I hadn't made dinner plans, which we see right here. So using includes then, we can include other files that have their own knots. In those knots, we can have stitches and we can reference those stitches by using the names of their knots. Once they are part of the larger project, we can move throughout these by moving to either the larger knots, dinner and getting ready, or within the same file, chapter two, chapter three. We can also, in other files, reference other knots. Chapter three, in, for example, was referenced within getting ready. That was a whole different file, but it was included using the include keyword. As we progress through the story, through this flow here, we can see we can move back and forth. See, divert to pizza choices, its own choices here, 
that, like the previous video, moves to its own knots. So again, thinking of stitches then as subsections of knots, we can include this continuation of the previous video by looking at knots of sections of the flow. We can move between these knots by using the verts, the arrow pointing to the right, to move to that knot within other knots. We can also use choices to, as the outcome of making a choice, move to stitches within knots or move to other knots. We can also loop back as we saw in the previous video and we see here by making choices in this example salad that routes us back to pizza choices. Finally, we see some conditional uses within here. So not only can we include files and use stitches, but we can base actions on if people have visited knots or stitches or not. We see here an example of that. Pizza here is the name of a knot, pizza, which is defined on line 19. However, it's also the name of a variable of sorts. And ink will keep track as of if we can, we <laughs> if we have visited that knot or stitch or not. <laughs> so in this case, if we had already visited the knot pizza, it will be greater than one. So we can test the thing if it's less than one. We can also test to see, as we see in the second line here, second choice on line 12, if we had visited it, in which case it would be true or not. So let's see that in action. So we turn down here and we see pizza, because right now that's the only choice. We haven't visited pizza yet. So this is false, this is false, and this is false. So the combination of these two, of these three different conditionals were all going to be false because this is false to start. So once we've visited pizza, we've now visited that knot, and pizza is now true. So now we see it can't be 10, but it can be line 12. Salad is now less than one, and pizza is now true. These are both true, and we see salad. Then we see nothing, because now pizza is true, salad is true, and nothing is less than. But notice here, we can go back to nothing, but we can't do it more than twice. That would be greater than two, or two or greater than two. But we now can go to sushi because we've gone to pizza and salad and nothing. And then the story ends. So as a review, we can use the include keyword defined here at the top to include other files. Other files can have their own knots. Knots can have their own stitches. The stitches are defined as a single equal sign instead of the three equal signs like a knot is. Once we have knots and we are including them, we can reference them, that is, go to them within the flow. Within those knots, we can reference other stitches and knots by using the name of the knot, a dot, and the name of the stitch. We can move back and forth across these by transitioning to other knots, other stitches, and other places within this flow. We can also keep track if we have visited other knots and stitches by using their names as a variable of sorts and including them within choices. As we saw here in this extended example, we tested to see if we had been to pizza or not. Once we had, we then we tested to see if we had gone to pizza and salad. If we had gone to pizza, salad, and nothing, then we showed that. And we can keep track of how many times we're visiting different knots and using them as conditional variables to test, again, if we had visited those spaces within the flow, those knots and stitches, and transitioning to those different places as a reaction to making choices within ink. Thanks for watching.